picked the wrong weight and quit sniffing glue. Good morning, folks. It's week three on the two Voyager build. Today happens to be uh, Labor Day here in the States, and that is the day when we pause from our labors and take uh, stock of all that we have accomplished and thank the people who have made, uh, made life so easy for us. And uh, that does not mean, of course, that I will stop working because... Labor Day is just another day when you are a retired model builder. Um, so today we are starting to address the subject of the uh, second Voyager or the clear Voyager that's going to have more of the windows lit. And we have two things to weigh. We have uh, the lighting that we have already accomplished in the other version and we have the lighting that must be added to this version so um, things that we need to do the same things that maybe we could learn to do a little differently a little better uh, a little bit more efficiently that kind of thing so I, I, I'm looking at what worked and what uh, we need to add and what worked was in the cells those came out fine so uh, I'm gonna go ahead and do up another set of nacelles like we did last week I doubt that I will even bother to put that on film because it is something that we have already done. Um, the new stuff that needs to be added is the uh, window lighting, of course, and I am trying to determine the best route. Now I am more or less committed to using strip lighting. It is the most efficient and even of the uh, lighting solutions. I'm just trying to channel out my paths and see what I need to do and how much and where it needs to go. I always find myself over lighting, so I'm trying to break that nasty habit and not set up myself to where I'm going to have to, you know, wire a bunch of strip LEDs and then go back in and take out half of them because I've done too much. Um... I'm also wondering whether or not, like an example here, in the original or the in the first ship that I did, I put a strip of blue LEDs behind this clear insert and uh, did that. That you remember that? That was only on last week's video. If you don't remember it, go back and check. I'll wait. Okay, you're back. Um, so I'm wondering if I need to do that again this time, or. <clears throat> would it be more efficient to simply put a white light in here and you know paint this blue that way I can get on I get away with just putting white lights in here the blue would be handled by the paint and not the uh, color of LED that that kind of stuff that's what I'm that's what I'm thinking of um, there is lighting in this top side of this of the secondary hall for example and there's lighting at the bottom of the secondary hall so I'm thinking if I make a plate that is a roughly the shape of this and I put my strip on it this way and this way you know covering both sides of the plate then it will light top and bottom that might be the smart way to go. I had originally thought of doing this, but uh, and a plate going side to side. So we're going to see whether that is more effective than that. Not on camera, whether this is more effective than this. There are wide areas of the ship that have no windows. Even though I have painted this area, I still can put a strip of that. Uh, silver tape down and that's a more effective light block and it will concentrate the lighting where it needs to go and um, particularly in this area here I'll save myself many coats of paint by simply putting silver tape here since this is the, the tiny area where windows are I can silver tape all of this and it will light block it 
without uh, having to add many coats of thick paint. Okay, I'm starting to isolate the window masks. I've got the, or the windows themselves, I've got silver tape all over the areas of the bottom where there are no windows and they're just a little strip right in here. And then I created this plate out of sheet stock with just a strip on the bottom of it that when I put it over like that, it keeps the light shining only and of course you can't see it that well because of the uh, masking but basically it only lets light out around the windows here on the bottom isolating that and it also gives me a nice platform nice level platform to uh, put any strip lights that are going to shine up to let the uh, light come through here so I think we're happy with that I just need to uh, uh, tape this down or somehow or just foil tape this down in place so that it will uh, stay and uh, then I could start building the upward lighting just added a uh, another little uh, one strip deal actually it's a two segment dealy to this top deck here from the underside so that you can uh, Give some uh, light where it may not reach up that high. I'm just checking to see how well it comes through some of these other places. And I have to be very careful that I... Oh yeah, that'll do. I'm just pulling back the mask, looking at it, and pushing it right back in place. Don't want to scratch the paint because every paint scratch is going to let light through. So you have to be very careful about your, your exacto etiquette. Um... Having done this bit now, I'm thinking that if I take um, some strips here and here and then add them to this bottom deck and have them shining up, that will take care of the windows and minimize the amount of lighting I'm actually attaching to the inside of this piece because this piece I have learned from doing the other Voyager um, has to be wedged in and sealed down so it's better that I don't have a lot of wire and rigmarole coming out of this that it's fairly uh, um, left alone fairly bare and then all of my stuff can be on this plate whether it's on this side shining up or whether it's in this side shining down because that will also allow me to attach this piece down to it without a bunch of you know extraneous wiring happening in here either so if we put all of our I think the philosophy I've come up with is if we put all of our wiring in our uh, strip lighting on this middle segment this, and then attach to the bottom and attach down from the top that's going to be the simplest and most effective way to do uh, the construction on this without having to, you know, watch a bunch of finicky wiring and, you know, tucking things in and keeping them from pinching and all of that. Um, I can put a flat plate in here that shines up this way so that when I put this down over top of it, there is no, essentially no lighting uh, or no strip lighting happening here uh, that that way I can also work on the deflector in this place and have the uh, nacelles already attached when I when it comes time see I can actually have the nacelles attached to this like that like I did before and that's true I will have to run some wiring out through this piece but it'll be the the cell wiring not the uh, window lighting hello and welcome back it is Tuesday work is continuing on the uh, clear or the clearer Voyager uh, as I said yesterday I'm working on the nacelles and uh, having done that last week I didn't feel like you needed to see me do that again but uh, this is the last one and thank the dear sweet Two pound baby Jesus. Uh, that is, it, uh, hopefully that's the last soldering I'm going to have to do for a while. The soldering these tiny LEDs is really uh, not up there on my list of favorite things. 
So I've got the last bit of fiber fill here and I'm packing it into this nacelle and uh, we are going to um, get this sealed up. Now the only thing that is new that you haven't seen yet is that I put a singular nano sized uh, cool white LED in the fan tail above the uh, or below the shuttlecraft doors. Let me see if I can pack this in and I will grab that other piece to show it to you. Uh, you know, the more often you do this, the better off, you know, the better you get at it. But still, I don't want to make a career out of making these nacelles. Um, but here is the, here is the piece. Nope, that's the piece we saw yesterday. The fantail, which has got all manner of clamps on it, which we can probably get rid of at this point. these off. The fantail has a light right in here and that is strictly to light up these back windows although it has the added benefit of lighting this center uh, beacon. This on the uh, on the filming model would be a strobe. There's only two or three strobes that I could see on the because uh, I ran the opening credits that's where they have all the Voyager flybys, and I'm not counting the CG model that they switched to when we got towards the end of the series. Going with the filming model for most of my uh, most of my color choices and references, and um, let's see if we can attach some power to this momentarily here. Yeah, we can see a little bit of light here that needs to be light blocked, but the important thing is lighting these back windows. I was not going to try to shove a green and a red bulb in here, although in retrospect I probably could have. I decided not to. Um, it was already getting fairly crowded back in there, and I just didn't think about it until it was too late to crack this back open to do it. So uh, that's my story. I'm sticking to it. The, uh, the getting back to the strobe issue, I found that there was a strobe. You know, these lights here at the, at the tail strobe. There is a strobe, top and bottom, right up here at the front. And although some references show a strobe, show show this light strobing right here. I'm choosing not to strobe that. Why? Well, because in all of the times that we saw the conference room or Janeway's ready room and we saw the view out the window, never once did we see a glaring beacon going off every two seconds. So um, I'm going dis to I'm going to disagree with that being a, a strobe light. And, you know, even the, even if it was a strobe in the filming model, I am not putting a strobe there because it makes no sense. A strobe here makes sense because there are no windows shining on it or no windows looking out on it. But I can't for the life of me would, uh, would uh, accept the fact that there was a blinking light here that we never saw reflected in either of those windows. So, there you go. That's my rationale. So that leaves us with not really any reason to put a strobe circuit in here. So I don't think I'm going to do it. If this were a larger model and I had more room to do it, maybe if there was ever a 350 scale Voyager, wouldn't that be sweet? Um, then I could justify that. But I think lighting up the windows is going to be uh, flashy enough and I could save Ralph's board for a model that would really make better use of it. Okay, I'm working on lighting the uh, secondary hall windows, and I've got this little piece of uh, just light strip on a uh, piece of white uh, sheet stock that I am setting up like this face down so that it will light all of the windows on the bottom, yet spill out enough along the top here that I am hoping once the top is placed, it will still let the... Uh, side window shine 
and then on top of this I can run a strip further down that will catch not only these windows back here but also the side window so we're gonna sit it on something like that and um, as that's all happening I've got like nine nine different sub assemblies that are clamped up and drying and I am uh, rushing that procedure which is never good shouldn't rush things as they're trying to dry particularly when you're dealing with glues so uh, we're gonna I'm gonna walk away from this for a bit I'm trying to see what else I can do now I think I can go ahead and start uh, foil taping some of turn this off uh, foil tape some of this area in here so that it will be ready when the uh, next assembly of lights are going to be bouncing off against it okay so this looks like a good place to stop for today got both the nacelles attached to the secondary hull I've got the bottom plate uh, attached and everything's wired in and working that's gonna light up my bottom windows uh, I want to go ahead and glue this down and uh, maybe even epoxy it get it in place let everything that's back here be curing overnight and then hopefully we'll be ready to set this down on top of it and won't that be fun Good morning for everybody. It is Wednesday. Um, Wednesday and work is progressing on the Voyager. I uh, don't think we'll have any problem getting this thing closed up this week. Um, we are to the point now where we've got all of this stuff going on. Well, let me make sure I can... There you go. We've got all of this going on. If I put power to it, it will look like this. Let me... Let me throw some power at it. Now, um, you will forgive the more than occasional light block. We still have a ton of that to worry about. But, let me attach some wiring. Here we go. Okay, we've got bottom hull lighting. We've got all of the nacelles lit up. Go ahead and kill this overhead so you can see it in its full glory. We've got a lot of that going on. And... Today we are going to continue this work. We're going to put a big old strip through here to the point where we can put this part down on it next. Now, uh, what this, what, what I've run into that is different on this build, let me turn this off and turn that back on, different on this build than on the previous one is that because of this light work I've put in here, this light box, I've got less room to work on the deflector lighting than I did on the last one. The last one I was spoiled, spoiled rotten because of the uh, amount of room I had to work with. So I have had to really trim this back. I've only got uh, just the barest amount right behind that deflector. So that's going to affect how much light diffusion I'm going to get because it's going to press the... Uh, the blue segment and I gotta double check which one of these is the blue segment because I have to build up this uh, I have to build up this uh, lighting thing again this back plate and um, it's gonna push it right up against the back of the clear part which is not okay this is the one it's not my uh, preference but it's what we got to do this time I have learned that um, from the last time that I first thing I did was I got rid of all those pegs that were on the front of the deflector housing so that I could slide it straight back and down which actually is a cleaner look than last time let me uh, hold this in such a way that you might see might benefit from my what I'm saying here this has to go oh stop pivoting it has to go straight in like that and then down which is going to be a lot easier this time getting rid of all those pins so what I need to do first is wire up that segment attach it to this back plate and then attach that back plate right in behind where that deflector dish is going to be 
you see it's right in there with not a lot of room at all now luckily the uh, deflector dish sits in front of it so it's gonna block the worst of the uh, horrible sourciness um, but it's still something that we're going to be noticing. So let me get out. See, I need to get the strand of this. And I need to solder that up. And Okay, so the iron is heating up. We're going to uh, uh, get this deflector deal done. And we also need to go ahead and put this stri uh, strip in here. Now, as we can see, uh, we need lighting to go all the way from this point here all the way back to when I put this in place the last window is about here yeah these windows here we can we can benefit from shine but if I stop right about there we'll be in good shape so let me see by the time we add or lay the segments down how much that's actually going to take up so we put a strip that is Okay, the even number of strips, or even number of inches, since we can only cut this every inch. If I do that, hmm, I can get away with one less, but if I do that, that pushes it all the way back. Now, and that, is that going to be too much? That might be too much, so let's go ahead and cut it off at that. And we'll, we'll kind of center it in that area. That's going to be a grouping that is one, two, three, four inches long. Do I have one of those already pre-cut? I do. I'd rather not cut it off of this long length if I have one that is that length already. So let's see. I think this the problem with this is it might be blue. So let me check. Positive and yeah, that's blue. We can't use that. That's not to go there. Some point it might be smart to just write on the strip what color it is, so I don't have to keep checking. So we need four inches. Uno, dos, tres, cuatro. Okay, we cut off a segment. Cut off a segment here. And now we can put that right about something like that. And then that's going to shine up and do my top windows. I've got silver here to reflect that. That's going to take care of all of these side windows. Yeah, by the time we do that, it's going to take care of the side windows. It's also going to help shine up through this hole and do some of these windows on the top there but let's get that let's see I need to attach I need to glue that down and wire it in and we're going to end up with a wire coming up through this tube that we need to join everything with so we need to, yeah okay let's let's do some soldering alrighty I've got the uh, deflector in where I'm happy with it even though that is a lot closer to the uh, clear piece than I normally do uh, the uh, dish itself is blocking out the where the bulbs are so you don't see that sourciness so now that that's all packed in I think I'm going to do a bit of sealing from the back just to keep that in shape and then um, we're gonna put this strip here on and then we'll be ready to join these two pieces together. Okay, I'm ready to put these two chunks together, I do believe. I've got, I'm sorry, I, this mess is just getting out of hand here. Uh, I, what I've got is, uh, I've got the wire running to the deflector. This is the wires that are coming out of the body. This is the wire that is starting the top assembly here. And this is one of those deals I only want to do once, so let's describe it and then do it. Um, what I've got is a, uh, a push and pivot type of deal where I need to push this down, get the deflector all lined up like that, get over this pin here on the front and the same pin on the other side, and then 
push this down and then hold it all together. I can then squeeze the uh, rest of the uh, shuttle bay and the rest of that down once it has been pushed forward into position. So, what do I need to do? I need to lube up all of those joints with some MEK, get them ready to go, and then uh, get, not that there's a lot to clamp, not a meat to clamp to, but I need to get some clamps ready to pull that down into place. But first I need to uh, get some good amount of, uh, of adhesive going on in there and then into these uh, pinholes. Okay, the big work has been done. I've got the two big old chunks joined up. Uh, we're up to this point, but of course that brings us back to our nemesis from the last build. And that is this big old honking uh, seam right here. Not really a good way to, to eliminate that that I've found uh, because of the way you have to push the uh, saucer or the uh, deflector dish in. So the best course is to get the putty out again. Just putty that seam. Uh, I really wish there was a more effective way to pull that in. I can kind of push it down like this but it's always going to be under stress if I push that down and put some CA in it that might uh, uh, alleviate some of that but there's still a big old uh, seam that needs to be uh, plastered over with the old Tamiya putty okay I've come up with my layout for the uh, strip lighting in the top and at first look it's like yeah that's a lot that's a lot of lighting and this is the point where I realize I usually end up removing about half of the lighting that I planned. So am I over compensating here? Am I over am I over planning this? Um, now I've got a block in the top there that's gonna effectively effectively light this area up. But this is where all the windows are. I mean It's tough. I could like get rid of these middle ones and just space single units out around here and not use the uh, the entire strip. I think what I might need to do is determine whether uh, I could knock these back or get these done with single segments rather than double segments. I've got all of this corner window all of these windows here being lit by see when you look at it this way that's a ton of lighting a ton of windows but it's a fairly small confined space so it's going to bounce around do I need this many I have a feeling that I don't but I, uh, I also have a feeling that if I under plan then I'm going to spend just as much time adding them back in. So I think what I'd like to do is to go ahead and do one side. Do one side with the minimal lighting and see if that's going to be enough or whether I need to add more and that'll tell me how I need to do the other side. So if I do this with single segments And put I start with a start with a single segment back here for that corner. And then I space another segment here. And another one here and just dot them along the edge. and then put one in the center like that. Just dot them along it and then I'll close it up and I'll see if that's going to be enough to light the windows for this side. Okay, I think I think that's going to be the right solution. It's getting these are getting enough love here. The only ones that aren't getting enough love are back there, but that's also they're going to get hit by 
these neck lights that are going to be lit once uh, that is joined up but that's half easily half of the bulbs I was thinking of using and that gets me um, that even actually that actually gets me the ones in front here too I might be able to move some of these further inland not bring them all the way out to the edge and that will uh, make things easier to work with but yeah, I think that's going to do it. I think that's plenty. So just three more single segments. On, well, four more single segments. One, two, three, and then four up here. And uh, that'll be plenty. Yay! Not only do we save bulbs that way, but uh, of course it means, you know, eight times more soldering. Not looking forward to that. But uh, it saves me on bulbs or strip lighting. And it saves the amount of power this thing is going to take. It's still planning on running everything off of a transformer. I don't think we can get away with a battery for very long. But, uh, yeah, I mean, it'll run cooler. It'll run more efficiently. It just means more wires to solder and to insulate. Alrighty, I've got the second half of the uh, top saucer lighting in. This is all finished now. And uh, all I need to do is attach this top part in and it will be uh, re well it's ready to it's ready to have that part attached now so I'm um, looking at it all of the uh, lights are accounted for if I oops, I gotta make sure that these wires don't touch each other somewhere there is a short where is the short oh this wasn't this hasn't been soldered in yet Okay, let's fix that. All right, there's one last job to do before we close up the top of the saucer or the top of the primary hull to the bottom of the primary hull. And that is I want to go around each and every single one of these joints with a uh, hot glue. Uh, not only does it hold the tape, hold these uh, LED tape down because I don't always trust the adhesive on the back of LED strip to stay. But also it will insulate the uh, connection so uh, I make sure nothing is touching the uh, touching the metal tape like this one is and I can insulate around that with the hot glue okay this is all together now all to all together now it's all together now um, except for the spinal piece, the final spinal uh, piece that goes on. But you can see all of the windows are glowing from behind. All I need to do is to finish the, the painting on the top. But everything is looking good now. I am going around and checking for light leaks beyond which I uh, want to have. Like uh, light leaks between parts and such. I can see there's a big old light leak here at the back of the shuttle bay where that shuttle bay bulkhead doesn't quite meet and I'm just squeezing in a little ye old tulip and uh, coming back and wiping that off but uh, that'll take care of the majority of it and just get the rest out with the toothpick but uh, yeah I'll clean that up just fine yep that'll take care and I'll give it a Good old swipey swipey with the uh, wet q-tip let that dry looks like I've got a little bit left between the deck here and the side wall but this will definitely be ready for a uh, primer coat tomorrow Put the spine piece in probably before I uh, close down today tonight I will 
go around that edge with a bit of the uh, putty so that that can be drying overnight. Buy these Q-tips in bulk, and I uh, probably go through ten or twenty of them a day. Yeah, that looks good. Okay, we're gonna let that dry, and then ooh, I can see some stray fiber fill here. Just clean that off with a little bit of flame. Burns off the extraneous fibers and good morning it is Thursday uh, the week progresses it's a ugly rainy day outside it's uh, not a fit day out for man or beast which means I really can't take this outside and do any priming on it uh, spent my morning getting my teeth scraped my semi-annual tusk sharpening and uh, teeth cleaning so you know you can, you can guess the kind of mood I'm in. Plus, uh, nothing spells a wonderful day than starting out by driving in the rain to go get your teeth scraped. So, that's none of your problem, but that's my problem. One last thing to do here is to put this uh, spine cover on, which is something I can go ahead and do. And uh, I've already started sanding and priming, or sanding some of these seams that... Uh, um, some of the gaps that uh, resulted from yesterday's work and I put some uh, putty in it last night and today I'm just taking the opportunity to do some cleaning and uh, we're gonna see how well this fit in I remember this being a sore spot on the last one that seems to me that it wanted to uh, sit up a little higher than it should so I'm gonna sand down the back side of this and see if I can get it to lay flatter this may be all we can get done today if it doesn't uh, it's it's raining cats and dogs out there right now <laughs> excuse me you didn't need to hear that but uh, the last bit of construction we can do is just this bit here and you can hear the rain hitting the uh, hitting the window so that'll give you an indication of how nasty it is the goal I have set for myself is to get everything done on both of these to the point where uh, we can spend next week doing nothing but painting. So um, last on the last check of this, it was ready to be covered up. Let me uh, pull some power to it. Yeah. All of the windows where you can see are, are lighting up and the nacelles are lighting up so we're ready to do nothing but close that uh, spinal piece in. Good morning everybody welcome back it's Friday and uh, what a difference a day makes. The sun is shining, the birds are singing, the children are playing in the streets. It is so much better than the weather was yesterday and it has renewed and revigored my uh, my willingness to live and my willingness to get on with this Voyager. Now, I spent a little bit of time this morning concocting a suitable hull color uh, because the uh, suggested color that is in the uh, instructions is from, I looked it up, but I believe it's a humbral color. And if you are in America and somebody suggests a humbral color, they may as well have written it in uh, hieroglyphics because humbrals are not the uh, currency of the land. Uh, some people might like them. Um, but really, if you're trying to make it easy for somebody, Give them a Tamiya alternative because, like it or not, Tamiya paints are what most people have access to. Um, so, I've concocted my own little uh, mixture based on uh, Tamiya paints, and it is 50% sky blue. I'm sorry, uh, light blue. 50% light blue, 50% uh, sky gray, and 25% 
flat, uh, flat white, which, as you know, makes it 125%. But math was never my strong suit. So what I've got is a good base color, and I could end up uh, adjusting it and uh, tweaking that formula. But I wanted to start off with something that was approximately the color of the blue plastic when we started, and I have, I have succeeded in that because you can't look at that and even tell that the top part of this leg has been painted. It is the same color as the raw plastic. Uh, before I getting ready to spread or to paint that uh, color on said models, um, there's a couple things I wanted to take care of first. There's dark areas here where the sensor palettes are. And here, here, and here. Let me goose the camera up a bit. This, this, and this. Uh, I wanted to paint those darker and get those masked off. Now, these are... I won't say they're exactly uh, the the, uh, the primer gray because yesterday when it was so nasty out and un inhospitable and not friendly to painting, I did paint the uh, the inside with a little bit, I think it was the sky gray or was it dark sea gray? I think it may have been the straight up uh, sky gray. But I went around it and sprayed the parts that I had sanded and all of that uh, inside. I, I, you know, sat down cloths and all that to paint it at, but I wasn't able to take it outside and hit it with a primer coat because of the weather. So I did more concentrated coats of just the gray. And the areas that are jet, that are that color of gray that I want to keep that color, uh, I've gone ahead and made masks for, and I'm going to put those down, and I'm also going to mask off these darker areas that I've painted this morning. And uh, once I get all of those protected, then I will be in a better place to start spraying that uh, new, the new mixture. Let me make sure that... Now see, I thought that fit a whole lot better than that when the first time I made it. So I'm going to have to... Uh, well, I can't do this and be distracted by the camera. So let me uh, turn the camera off, put some of this masking down, and then we'll pick it up from there. Okay, I've got the masking down. I've got the masking down for the bottom side, at least. These are all the areas that I wish to keep this gray color. I need to uh, flip over and do some stuff on the top. There isn't near as much. Just a few back here on the nacelles, and then... These guys I painted in earlier, I think I'm going to end up doing negative masks around that so that you could surround it. We'll, we'll try, I'll, I'll give them to you both ways, but I think it's going to make more sense to uh, paint that first and then mask up to the perimeter and spray inside rather than spraying the inside first. I really don't know what I was thinking there. I just wanted to give both options, I guess. So... Um, where are the ones I've got left? That is only for, yeah, it's for these on the uh, pylons and the uh, deck plate here. Okay, and there's the top. Like I said, not nearly as many. Uh, primarily back here on the pylons. And then I went ahead and masked that bit off. These things have so much stuff sticking up through them that it becomes uh, less practical to try to... Uh, mask the center but since that's all recessed that's a lot easier to mask off and then you can do this one kind of the same way like that and then spray the inside that's what I'm thinking on how the actual masks are gonna work so this one is done I need to plot another set of masks for the white uh, or the uh, opaque no, sorry, the translucent. This is the opaque. I always get those two confused. Uh, this is the white one that has the most lighting in it. I need to put these masks on here, and then I'll be ready to put the blue base down on everything. Okay, that's both of them. That's We're ready for the blue paint now. Uh, when you're putting down these masks here, these long skinny ones, um, depending on how much they stretch when you're pulling them around or how much you tug them out of shape, you might have to do a little bit of trimming. You might have to go up to the end of it and just, you know, run your knife into the uh, panel edge and help just reinforce that. Plus, there's these little, um, I'm going to call them sticky-uppy things 
they're just little bit of bits of raised paneling that you might just want to run a q-tip or a toothpick over just to make sure that your masks are kind of snugged up against those and they're not uh, you're lessening the chance that the paint's going to creep up under that that's all that's all you're doing uh, but there you go so now we're ready to uh, get out the blue paint that I mixed up this morning and do a and do a, a first uh, top coat okay so I've got one done and I'm working on the second one and basically I am just recreating the uh, bluish green that the plastic was on the blue models and I'm putting a light coat down to uh, give a good even coverage over everything. Then I will uh, flip these over and do the tops. I need to spin this one around so that I can get to the other side of it. It's where, I'm, where I miss my uh, uh, turntable, but I didn't think to dig it out yet, so uh, that's why. Now, as I said, this is just a base coat that everything else is going to get built on, with the exception of the gray that I have masked off to protect it. I'm kind of happy with that gray, and everything that happens with these colors are going to be built on this base coat, whether it's uh, bringing it up lighter, making it more gray, or even uh, making it darker. Everything's going to happen on this base color. So uh, I've got enough there on the bottom sides that, and I'm making sure that I have the nacelles in the upright and locked position so that I am spraying into the exposed area of that pivot. And then when I flip it over, I'll flatten them back down so that I am also spraying the most exposed areas. But. Uh, we're going to let this sit for, oh, I'd say maybe 10, 15 minutes. Let the bottom of that dry so that I can flip these over on the uh, styrofoam and not worry about uh, it, the paint sticking to it. And then we'll come back and do the tops. Okay, it's been a few minutes and uh, I'm going to proceed on to the top now um, once the tops have had a chance to dry. I think we'll call it a week. It's uh, getting into the, uh, not late afternoon, but it's getting into the afternoon so much that I don't think I'll have uh, enough time to take on the next ta uh, task today. So uh, let's finish this up and, uh, and then we'll call it a week. Okay, I've let that first coat dry a little bit and now I've just gone back with an all over dusting. Now the first one, the first coat was meant to get in every little nook and cranny and this second coat uh, which is a light spritzing on top is not meant to do that. It's meant to hit the high spots and the big panels and it's, uh, I've upped the white content just to bring it up a little brighter and I'm not concentrating the brush in any one area for any great amount of time. I'm just kind of dancing over the whole thing just to hit the high spots and it's important to me to have both of them side by side while I'm doing it so that I can guarantee that they're getting the same paint and the same amount of coverage and I could kind of eyeball between them how uh, how heavy it's going on. Now we're going to let that dry, flip them over and do the bottom.
And here you go. It's uh, This is where we're going to finish up for the week. We've got two, count them, two uh, small voyagers here and they are ready for their uh, top coats. This is a good primed basic body color. I've got the gray areas that I want to keep gray. I've got those masked off and uh, we're in great position here to uh, start doing the panel work and the lightening up the general lightening of this but also a lot of the panel work and the detail painting and then the uh, multitude of decals that need to go on so that's what we'll be doing next week and that dear friends is where we're going to finish for this week we've got two blue voyagers uh, not like my blue heaven but two blue voyagers and they are both caught up to each other now and I can uh, do the panel work and the detail painting on these uh, at the same time uh, which will make it a lot easier in, in, in an economy of scale sort of way and then we've got a heck of a lot of decals that go on each one of these and that's going to be the subject of next week the thrilling final chapter in the two voyager saga so join me then until then uh, be good be good to each other go out and enjoy these last waning days of summer if you can uh, be good to each other, be good to yourselves, and we'll see you here next time.